All right, today's experiment is the Wagner Mirvine rearrangement. All right, so we're going to start with our camphene, which has this bicyclic structure. Uh, it is an alkene, and the alkene is then going to react with our glacial acetic acid. And so there is the formula for the acetic acid Lewis structure. And so the electron pairs from the pi bond, the pi electrons from the pi bond, attack the acidic hydrogen on the carboxylic acid uh, and you form a tertiary carbocation on this bicyclic tertiary carbocation and of course you form the acetate as well I'm not balancing the reactions you will have to balance every reaction for the lab alright now what is very unique about this rearrangement is normally when you have a tertiary carbocation you do not get any rearrangements there are two uh, examples of rearrangements occurring with a tertiary carbocation uh, one is that you can do resonance you can do a shift uh, in order to get a resonance stabilized carbocation in this case, which is the other case, is that you can have a shift which leads to a uh, less sterically hindered carbocation. All right, and so the uh, re reaction here is from right here, this carbon carbon bond is going to uh, connect from this carbon to this carbon. All right, and so this carbon here is going to lose. This carbon is going to lose this bond, and so this is the carbon that's going to be the carbocation. All right, and so you do the shift, uh, and again, you have a secondary carbocation. All right, so you would not normally do this. You would go the other way. You would go a secondary carbocation would rearrange to a tertiary carbocation. This is a unique case where a tertiary carbocation is going to do a shift to a secondary carbocation, to give rise to a more sterically favorable bicyclic compound. All right, and so your uh, carbocation is a secondary carbocation, and then the acetate, which you got uh, a, a product in experiment in reaction one, uh, then attacks that carbocation, and you have your isoborneal acetate product. All right, so that is part A, and so we will then get a part A overall reaction, limiting reagent, theoretical yield. All right, and so here uh, we're going to then take our product, the isoborneal acetate, and do part B. In part B, we're going to add potassium hydroxide. And so the hydroxide is going to attack the carbonyl carbon, putting the electrons to the more electronegative oxygen. All right, and then the electrons will come back down and kick out your uh, O that is connected to the bicyclic ring. All right, this is a two step product process, this is an addition elimination. All right, so you will not do an SN2 reaction here where the OH would attack the carbon and kick out the O, that would be doing an SN2 reaction on a sp2 hybridized carbon. That is not allowed. sp2s must occur on a uh, sp3 carbon. All right, and so this is going to do an addition. The OH is added, and then it is going to then eliminate, addition elimination, and so this is going to kick out your bicyclic group as the leaving group with the O minus. All right, and then the other product is going to be acetic acid. And so then the O minus will then attack the acidic hydrogen from your acetic acid, and you get your isoborneol. All right, and so that is your alcohol. All right, and then you also get your acetate if you balance the reaction. All right. So isoborneol, that is then the second product that we're going to get from this experiment. All right, and so then we're going to take our isoborneol in part C. So you're going to have uh, three 
separate reactions to give overall reactions for. In the third reaction, we're going to take our isoborneol that we formed in part B, and we're going to react that with chromic acid. Chromic acid is a strong oxidizing agent. Your alcohol here is a secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohols will oxidize into a ketone. And here's the mechanism for that oxidation. And so the oxygen of your uh, alcohol will attack your uh, chromium on your chromic acid and the electrons go to the O. All right, and then we're going to do a tautomerism. So you can do this in one step or you can do it in two steps. All right, and so you are going to uh, release an H plus here that releases the H plus and this OH is going to attack that H plus. So remember that a tautomerism is just going to move a hydrogen. And so we're moving the hydrogen from one oxygen in the structure to another oxygen in the structure, a tautomerism. And so now our O minus, the electrons come down and kick out water, which is a good leaving group. All right, and so then we have this structure. All right, and now the water that got kicked out is going to take the hydrogen that is on the bicyclic ring and that is going to form a carbon oxygen double bond and that's going to kick out our chromium and so you end up with the ketone all right and you also have your chromium product now this chromium product uh, is going to then react with our acid so this formed H3O plus, and so the chromium that got kicked out is going to react with the acid uh, to form this uh, chromium plus four oxidation. All right, and so your chromium, here it is plus four. So OH is minus one, OH is minus one, and then oxygen is minus two. And so on this chromium, you have, and electron pairs uh, are no uh, charge, and so you have two minuses from the two OHs and a minus two from your oxygen. So that is overall minus four. So the chromium has to be plus four to give that a neutral overall charge. And the chromic acid, if we come back to our chromic acid, we have two OHs, each at minus one, so that is minus two. We have two oxygens, each at minus two, that's minus four. So minus four for the two double bond O's, minus two for the two OH's, that's minus six. And so the chromium oxidation number is a plus six. So you see that the chromium oxidation went from a plus six to a plus four. That has been reduced. Chromium, the, the chromic acid, is the oxidizing agent. Remember that oxidizing agents are reduced. Uh, and then here you have the organic definition of oxidation all right and so what we have here is i didn't put in this hydrogen uh carbon has four bonds there is a hydrogen here for the four bonds to that carbon all right and so that carbon uh is and that h is going to come off and form your double bond o so what happened between this reactant and the product is this H and this H is gone. They are gone. And so a loss of hydrogen is a definition of oxidation. And so this compound is different from the initial compound by a loss of two hydrogens. When you lose hydrogens, that is an oxidation. So in organic, we talk about oxidation reduction uh, in terms of oxygens and hydrogens. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen or the loss of hydrogen. In this case, it was the loss of hydrogen. All right, so I've started the experiment. And let's see where we're at in our experiment. Um, so, in our experiment so far, what we have done, what I have done, is I took 3.2 grams of our caffeine. All right. So caffeine smells like Vicks, kind of more solid than a Vicks. All right, and so here is our caffeine. 
and I took 3.2 grams of caffeine and I dissolved it in 7.8 milliliters of glacial acetic acid, which is uh, very concentrated vinegar. So it's a very strong smell of vinegar. You don't want to uh, be uh, smelling that. Uh, and then one milliliter of six molar sulfuric acid. And then I warmed it on a hot plate and I swirled it for 15 minutes. Uh, and I, uh, after 15 minutes, I washed it with water, and then I washed it again with water, and then I washed it with 10% uh, uh, sodium carbonate, and then I dried it over three grams of anhydrous calcium chloride, uh, and I had a liquid product, okay? And so I weighed my liquid product. The liquid product weighed 2.90 grams, and so we can do our, uh, well, that's our actual yield. We can get our theoretical yield and our percent yield from reaction one. All right, and so again, the product mass was 2.90 grams. And so I took the entire amount, the 2.90 grams of isoborneal acetate, and to that isoborneal acetate, I added seven milliliters of a potassium hydroxide solution. Uh, and that solution was made by taking one gram of pure uh, sodium or potassium hydroxide, five mils of 95% ethanol and 1.6 mils of water. And now I am refluxing and it's been going oh, a good 20 minutes. So soon it will be ready uh, for the next step. All right, and so it's a nice red color. Uh, when I added the potassium hydroxide, it turned to this red color. All right, and so we have a nice boil, you can see the uh, reflux going quite nicely. The solvent front, you can see, is about here, which is great. And then it uh, drips back in. Uh, and so uh, while that's going, we're going to get ready for the next step, which is to get five grams of ice in a 100 ml beaker. And then we're going to pour that solution onto our ice. Uh, and then the isoborneol is going to solidify and then we are going to get that solid on the Buchner funnel and then we will get uh, our uh, melting point from our digimelt. Uh, and then we will be ready to start our camphor which is going to um, take our isoborneol which we're going to weigh and uh, we're going to add some acetone to that uh, and then we're going to add some chromic acid for the oxidation, swirl that for 10 minutes. And then we're going to uh, add some water. Uh, and then we're going to do a very different type of distillation. Now this distillation, uh, your solid is going to be coming out because as it cools through the condenser, it turns into a solid, which tends to clog the condenser. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the condenser and I'm going to do an abbreviated condenser. It's going to be an air condenser uh, and I'm just going to boil it and then I'm going to collect it so that it doesn't get clogged up uh, on the way down. Uh, you can do it either way. You then have to use a rod and you have to make sure that your, uh, your distilling it doesn't get clogged up in here. And if you're using the bigger one, it doesn't normally get clogged up to where it blocks air. But it could block the air, build up pressure, and then uh, send your thermometer flying out the top. So, uh, so I'm going to use a smaller distillation setup and see how that works. I've never tried that, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right, I'm going to go get the ice. We're going to pour that in and see what that looks like. A beaker.
per solution slowly on to 5 grams of ice contained in the beaker, still the ratio percent of the minutes. Okay. Put the solid in. Alright, so what to do? Turn off the distillation. Let that cool for a second, and then we're going to pour it onto our ice. Uh, which is then going to solidify, and then we're going to collect it. Uh, on our vacuum filtration. Alright, so pouring this onto ice, this is very hot, so I'm not going to hold the flask. This is a nice flask holder, and then I can just pour it right onto the ice. some oily solid being formed in there. Now, oils can get very tricky. Sometimes they actually go through filter paper uh, and you lose your yield. You want it to be as solid as possible. And then we have to wait for the ice to melt because that will not go through the filter either because ice is a solid. So we have to melt all the ice, send it through. And so you can see that it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's sticking to the sides. It's not a nice solid. It is more of an oily solid, not a crystal solid. But it's definitely solid. ice cube has a hole in it you can't see in there very well but uh, the solid is getting collected in the center of the uh, of the ice cube is kind of strange the ice cube uh, I can't see it I don't think I want to pour it uh, anyway that's probably oh I poured out so now it's out of the ice so now you have a solid chunk of product and then you have a solid ice cube right next to it.
pull in the vacuum, you can see the solid, some of well, no, those are bubbles, so, uh, but the liquid is going through pretty quick, so it's a good suction filtration, not just gravity, it's being pulled through. Uh, and then you have, we have our chunk of solid, I don't know if you can see this chunk of solid that's about to come out of here. Along with the ice cube. I'm a little concerned that this oil is going to stick to our filter paper, we're not going to be able to get it out. See a little drop of oil down there, so uh, you're definitely going to get some of that oil to come through as well. All right, so we're going to have to get a melting point of that. Let's see if I can get that going. I'm going to pick a, a crystal uh, that's dry on the side, see if I can get it. crystal in there, I can barely see it. Okay.
friends. So as a morning we want the Mass of that, we also want to It's starting to melt at 89.3 degrees Celsius. 89.3. solid in here and then I will weigh it again and that will give us the uh, mass of the isoboreal. calculate our theoretical yield and our actual yield, theoretical yield, and we get over 100%, it's because we didn't uh, wait for that to dry long enough. Let's see what we have. We have 38.7585. 
8.7585. All right, so that's about 1.7 grams. All right, and so when you do that subtraction, you're going to get your 1.7 or so grams. We're going to use all of that for the next step. Filtration. All right, so we're going to set up our tiny distillation. So we're not going to use a condenser for this tiny distillation because the condenser tends to get clogged. So we're just going to go. Nine, we'll just go with 1.69 grams. Three sig figs is only 1.69 grams. Uh, and to our 1.69 grams, we're going to add three mils of acetone. And then we're going to add our chromic acid. We're going to add three mils of chromic acid. Do the oxygen. All right, and we need to cool it as well, so we'll get our acetone. Three mils of acetone. Three mils of acetone. Mix that up. So we added our three mils of acetone. all in our acetone. And then we're going to add our chromic acid and oxidize it. Still a little bit of solid left in there. Solid left. Okay. Then we're going to cool this down when you do an oxidation. Uh, it is exothermic, and again, if you do things at very high temperatures, you tend to get a lot of side products. So we're going to uh, cool this down. Much, it's just a little bit. It says between 15 and 25, so we don't need a whole lot of cooling. Right, 
So it is nice and cold to start with. So we're going to get our chromic acid. Three mils of chromic acid. do our very short distillation. Definitely can tell the reaction occurred. Uh, it did warm up. It's still warming up. Pull it down a little more. We're going to boil it here in a minute. It's not really warm. You can tell the reaction first, it's not boring or not. It's definitely excellent turn. Alright. That we're going to alright, we're going to take We're going to have to heat it very gently. And we're going to collect products. All right, so we have 15 mils of water. So we're going to heat it gently, uh, and the first three mils we're going to discard. They should be very low boiling uh, organic impurities, and then we will collect the rest of our uh, camphor. So 
1.69 grams of isoborneol. We added three mils of acetone. Uh, then we cooled it down. We added then our three mils of chromic acid. Add our 15 mils of water, and then we're going to distill. And then the first three mils of distillate, uh, we're going to uh, discard. And then we're going to put an ice bath going here. So I'm going to collect the first three mils in here, and then I'm going to collect the rest. All right, so the solvent front is coming. I don't know if you can see it, but we're about to get our first drip coming over. Uh, and this boiling point is at 54 for the first drop that comes over, the boiling point's at 54. So far, we're at 60. Okay, it's going up. And we are now at 70. All right, so I think we're about ready to start collecting. Hard, I should have collected in a graduate cylinder to see. Uh, the actual three mils, but that looks pretty close. Three milliliters, so we're going to It's 2.6, that's pretty close. Without the condenser cooling it, we probably aren't going to have a lot of solid form. It's going to stay nice and warm. And then our uh, camp four is going to be uh, all collected as a liquid. Staying cool down here, I don't want it to evaporate back out. I want it to stay in the flask. All right, and now we are collecting, and our temperature is at 24 to 60, 80. Uh, we are at 100 degrees right now that we are starting to collect our liquid at.
get the Jupiter funnel ready. We're going to collect in on the Jupiter funnel. All right, so this experiment, you're going to have three, three theoretical yields, reaction one, two, and three. You're going to have three actual yields for one, two, and three. You'll have three percent yields for one, two, and three. All right, we're collecting at, it's about 104 right now. I saw steam coming out. I know that it's uh, escaping. I don't want it to escape. So I want to keep the sides of this flask cold. Good distillation, not boiling over. The, you can see the green going up to here. We definitely don't want to be collecting green over here. Um, so distillation is going at the right pace. And temperature still about 104.
the first three mills that we discarded, that's mostly, that's just the acetone we have with that came out. some green over there, which is not good.
long isolation. All right. a white solid on the side that's what it's supposed to be a white solid so hopefully the green solution goes through and we have our white senior color was solid this we need something to scrape that out with this is another one that's going to stick to the sides of the flash quite a bit solid on the side. Again, it's going to be hard to get all of that out of here into there.
get a melting point. Let's see if I can get some first region. We got some crystals down there. I'm going to do a quick uh, melting point. I hope it's a quick melting point. Let's see. Starting to melt. Alright, we're at 95. That's not melting yet.
Yeah, it's still not melted. It's at 102, I'm still not melting.
All right, I'm going to increase the heating here. Oh boy. It is at 150 and still not melting. Hundred and sixty and still not melting. One sixty five and it melted at one sixty five. So the melting point that we have is one sixty five. It is a liquid. All right, uh, now we got to win. Should be nice and dry by now. All right, so the camphor is a nice white powder. looks very pure. All right, and let's get a mass. Mass of camphor, 1.0074 grams. 1.0074 grams, so right at one gram of product. All right, that is the end of the Wagner-Mirvine experiment.